Welcome. My name is Mike Gordon. I'm with Explorer Milt Marcy and Explorer Mr. Peter Beach. They are hunters for uh, species that are thought to no longer exist and one that uh, they've searched for and have sightings of themselves and uh, would like to talk more about is a pterosaur of which there are multiple uh, variations. So we want to talk about pterosaurs. Milt, these pterosaurs lived apparently during the dinosaurs, when the dinosaurs lived. Why aren't they called dinosaurs? Well, a lot of people think of them in the same uh, vein as dinosaurs because they have this uh, mental construct of creatures that lived long, long ago, way before uh, Peter, I believe, in, 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 anything existed. Um, and uh, they're not around today, similar to dinosaurs, or at least that's what they think. Um, but uh, we don't really know uh, all the details about their uh, body functions, uh, whether they're warm-blooded or cold-blooded. I'm thinking they have to be warm-blooded, and the thinking is that uh, dinosaurs are cold-blooded. Um, I don't know if that's all true either. Um, but they're, they're lumped together because of the evolutionist worldview that they both are creatures that lived long, long ago. Okay. Peter? Tell us about pterosaurus okay. comparisons. Well, uh, pterosaurs are not uh, <clears throat> dinosaurs on the basis of something very particular. And uh, briefly, I'll just say, with a pterosaur, they don't have a hole in their pelvis, and they don't have a ridge on, one of, on their leg bone. That's the difference. It's not much, but... Uh, Okay, so pterosaurs. There are different kinds of pterosaurs. There are pterosaurs with no tail or very small tails. I shouldn't have to say no, but they're so small you can't detect them. The ones we saw in the one we saw in uh, Papua New Guinea on uh, New Britain uh, didn't have a discernible tail. Let me interrupt for a second. Peter and Milt went on an expedition to Papua New Guinea where they saw a species of the Cerasaurus, mm -hmm. and that's what Peter's referring to now. Right. Um, it also uh, had uh, it had no discernible tail, and there are pterosaurs with no tail or a small tail, and those with a long tail, and the ones with a long tail are considered ramphorhynchoid types. So some have tails and some don't have tails. Another difference, and I'm not being a scientist or an expert in this, I'm just telling you what I know, and there probably is a lot more that I don't know. Some have teeth and some don't have teeth. Now, the, the typical pterodactyl that people gravitate to when they think about a pterosaur had teeth and a very small tail. But they had that same wing style that all pterosaurs have, which is uh, basically... Uh, arms and an extended uh, pinky finger that goes clear out to the very end and the bones are very elongated. That's where you get the wings. The wings tend to go right on back to the legs, although there's some, some people say they don't, some people say they do. I think what we saw in Papua New Guinea tells us that they do go all the way back through the legs and so that they can adjust the uh, shape of their wing in that way. Some have this uh, hot top knot on their head, and some don't. So, uh, some are very large. Here's an example of uh, one of the largest. That's a caudalus. How tall? Is it? I see the man, but for yeah. our audience, what is that, three times I'm a man's height? I'm not an expert, so it looks 18, about 20 feet. Feet, yeah, 18, 20 feet. Yeah, uh, 18, 20 feet. Okay. okay. Um, and then there are very small ones. Some of them are just very tiny. So they find, you know, various sizes. Um, some have taut knots and some don't. For example, here, uh, the females are apparently uh, smaller than the males. The uh, adults and, and sub-adults, they're small ones and big ones. You can't tell if they're adults exactly by their size. Uh, so they're pteranodons, 
the ones like I think we saw, the best I guess I can say, this is what we saw in uh, Papua New Guinea. Can I interrupt you just a second sure. on that? Um, one of the main reasons we went to Papua New Guinea was because of a missionary friend, uh, family, that mm -hmm. had spent years there, and they had had sightings. And the mother, um, Harriet Sconce, had a very close sighting from maybe 20 feet away for like five minutes. And the creatures she saw and uh, described to us looked like this creature right here. Uh, it had the uh, crest on the head, uh, long leathery wings with the, with the uh, fingers or hand out here, you'd call it, um, and leathery. Uh, so she did a very good description uh, of what she saw. So that's, that's why we think the one that we saw when we went there probably looked like that. And you went to exactly the same area where we she were they with, had been. Well, she was, in a, she was in a village down below us, maybe a thousand feet. Okay. Well, you could uh, see their village. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the same general area. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. At any rate, so the size is different, the uh, lack of a tail or a tail differ. And uh, teeth, some have teeth, some don't have teeth. And um, at any rate, that's uh, basically what I wanted to show on that. There are also, uh, on, on Papua New Guinea, there's also reportedly something called a ropin, which is more like the pterodactyl, but with a tail. It's got teeth, has the uh, cr head crest. Um, this was a picture of one uh, that was described from Cuba. And I'm um, taking this from uh, Jonathan Whitcomb. My friend Jonathan Whitcomb uh, had this picture drawn. And uh, notice the, the tail. Well, this is probably something like what we saw at I mean, speculation completely, but probably what we have in uh, a smaller version in uh, uh, Yakima on the Yakima, Yakima River. expedition, yeah, okay. something like mm -hmm. that. But it can, again, it's complete speculation. So this version in Papua New Guinea is maybe uh, twenty feet, twenty maybe even thirty feet wide. The wingspan. Wingspan. Wow. So there are different species. There are different uh, dentition. These have teeth. Um, other rhamphorhynchoids don't have teeth. Um, I guess that's all I wanted to say about that. Okay. And these, these are the ones, now the ones that you were hunting when you went on your Yakima expedition, which one did you say? I think it's something like, like this, that one. only it has no teeth. And luminescent. And uh, they all probably bioluminescent. It probably comes from their chest, somewhere in there. I don't know if it's in their tail or in their belly or in their high in the chest. I have no idea. Could be anywhere. Could be many places. Could be two stripes. I don't know. Now, when you, when you actually, you're going to go on more expeditions. When you actually go on uh, your expedition and you come face to face with one of these things, what do you do next? We ask it to hold still while we get a picture. <laughs> Freeze, don't move. <laughs> do you need more equipment to catch them, or is it just a matter of luck? You happen to be uh, in the right place at the right time with your camera on. Well, we thought, uh, you know, it, if we had all the money in the world and, and the time, uh, I feel 100% confident we could go back to Papua New Guinea and we could document these uh, through pictures or video. Um, we know where they are. Uh, we were on the edge of their territory there. There's a, uh, there's a area just to the east of where we were where there's no human habitation at all for at least 25 miles. Mm -hmm. And the, the perfect habitat, you have these mountains like this with uh, vegetation all over, and you have streams running down between the mountains with fish. Uh, everywhere we've gone and heard anything about these creatures, uh, they talk about them eating fish. They like fish. So that's abundant there. Nobody to bother them in that area. Uh, and Pete had sightings um, 
on this mountain he talked about uh, of these lights going back and forth, which obviously they were flying at night. They're nocturnal creatures. Mm -hmm. If you see them during the day, it's usually very early or very late, uh, just before the sun sets. Um, so uh, I feel reasonably confident we could we could uh, video uh, these creatures, but we have to be in the right place with the right equipment. We probably want to have some night vision, and uh, maybe you can elaborate a little further on that. Yeah, we have two uh, light night vision uh, video cameras now that uh, we'll set up and uh, just run uh, continuously the whole night. Uh, but we have to get into a, a point where the uh, it's the right time of year and we're right in their migratory uh, area. Uh, we've been unlucky. We were lucky in the beginning. Now we've been unlucky for like four years. Um, but it hasn't quenched your your belief that these animals do exist and that you will get proof that they exist well i don't know if we'll get proof i'm you know 77 now so <laughs> <laughs> god's got me on a time schedule you know <laughs> uh, but uh, it would seem that somebody would be able to get proof in the not too distant future but um, it's god's timing not ours yeah there's one last thing I wanted to say. Uh, people have speculated that what we saw or what we see are not uh, pterosaurs or something else. They're using Jakob's razor principle. Uh, they would be birds. They would be bats. They would be uh, many things that uh, would you expect? Uh, well, I wanted to address that. Uh, we've seen frigate birds. We know what a frigate bird looks like. We've seen mm -hmm. them up close. We've seen them in the distance. Um, they look completely different mm -hmm. than the pterosaurs we saw. We've seen birds. We had uh, large eagles. Uh, we had large heron-like animals. Uh, we've seen all of these different animals. We've seen bats right in the village we were at. At night were hundreds of these giant bats. You've seen pictures of them as, as like they're some oddity, monstrous oddity. Fruit bats. Fruit bats. They're flying foxes is another term for them. And they're very common. They're, they're one of the most common animals that we saw there. And they are obviously not a pterosaur. They flap all the time. Birds flap almost all the time. There are exceptions. Eagles, for example. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in no way... Uh, can you convince me that what we saw was anything other than a pteranodon? I don't think there's anything we can... I can't prove that it's pteranodon until we actually have one in our hands. But it certainly was too big for any other bird. And it moved in a way that no other bird does. It doesn't have feathers. Mm -hmm. You can see a, a soaring bird usually has feathers out to the side like this at the end of the tips. This didn't have that. It had a crescent, a completely, uh, complete leathery uh, build to its wings. Nothing like that is uh, like a bat. A bat has, has bones in its wings and it flaps almost continuously. And mm -hmm. the wing shape going out like that. Uh, if you look at the, the wings of an eagle or hawk, uh, most any big bird, they're way different. Mm -hmm. and then you've got this uh, claw out here on each uh, each wing. You know how many birds have that? Um, and it's quite a bit of. I mean, there are a lot of different uh, telling factors that uh, limit this to a pterosaur. Well, that's exciting. Well, I'm excited for my, myself to see what these gentlemen find on their next expedition, and uh, it's exciting to uh, uh, talk about these things, and I'm, I'll be interested to see what you come up with the next time around. If you'd like to know more about uh, pterosaurs or the hunting for these uh, exotic species, uh, please get in touch with us through our website. And Peter and Milt, thank you. Thank you for joining us.